This is the eShark C8D electric skateboard review. It's a new Indiegogo campaign and it promises a lot. I was very skeptical about it, the whole e-board at first, but once I started writing it, I did a complete 180. See why I changed my mind after doing some real world testing of this electric skateboard. Plus, make sure you stick around to the end because I talk about some serious issues and important things you need to know about crowdfunding campaigns. So let's get straight into it, shall we? E-Shark, nice little square box. Again, it's tiny. The box is actually pretty heavy. I wonder what is in here, considering they say that it's one of the lightest boards in the industry. Oh, check out this grip tape like a, an astronaut in space. That is wicked. Here's the deck. Whew. Two hub motors, that means we've got the C8D. There's also the C8S, which is just a single motor. I wonder if you can see this, but that is where the power button is, right in there. All right, hang on a sec. What else we got in here? Pretty heavy backpack. I wonder something in here for sure. This backpack, is an add-on. The backpack is $69. And it carries your skateboard. Why is it so freaking heavy? Whew, a battery pack. Is that a spare battery pack or is that the battery pack? Yeah, it's a spare. Hell yeah. How good is that? You just saw how easy it is to swap over those batteries. And they can be used as power banks as well. They've got little USB ports on them and you can charge them when they're outside the deck, which is super handy. And you can just press this little button on the top, which will indicate how much battery you've got left. So this one's got three out of four. This one's, this one's dead flat. So I might chuck this one in. It's a pretty good little system. I don't mind that. And this backpack literally has so many pockets. I don't know, this could be my, my new whiz around backpack for when going on little rides. Oh, that must be where the skateboard goes. T-tool, gonna be the charger, no doubt. Lingy remotes, charger, and this would be the power brick. Yep, power brick, charger, board charger. Instruction manual, all righty then. While I'm running through this, I'm gonna go put this battery on charge and the remote on charge so that by the time I'm finished with all this stuff, we'll be ready to ride. All right, so while that's on charge, it shouldn't take too long. I put the battery that was pretty much at 75%, so that'll be done pretty soon. The remote is also on charge. Let's run through this real quick because I don't wanna to spend too much time here. Let's go out and ride this thing. That's what everyone really wants to see anyway. So I want to start by saying that this is an Indiegogo campaign. eShark have been manufacturing electric skateboards for four different companies that they have, they've told me about. They wouldn't mention which, which companies they are. From looking at their previous products, I kind of gauged that, that maybe that they were doing them for Lou board, maybe, I don't know that for a fact, and maybe the Spectra boards, but that's not certain. I don't know that for a fact. They wouldn't tell me which boards they were. They decided in 2018 to start manufacturing their own boards specifically for the Chinese market. And now they have decided to take on the European and the US market. And this is their first board, the E-Shark C8. And it comes in two options, the C8S, which is the single drive, and the C8D, which is the dual drive. On the Indiegogo campaign, you can get the C8S for $449. After that, their retail price is gonna be $699. And the C8D, the dual drive, on the Indiegogo campaign, their early bird price is $549. And after that, the retail price is gonna be $849. So how does that price stack up to the specs? Well, the range on this electric skateboard is the same for the C8S and the C8D. It is 14 kilometers or nine miles. So it's not very far on one battery pack, but the good thing is that it does have this, this quick swap battery system where you can throw in a new battery real fast. And the battery packs are $89. So it's not too expensive if you wanna be able to double your range or even triple your range. 
The battery is running Samsung 30Q cells in a 10S 1P array and is rated at 99 watt hours. So this is approved for air travel. Hopefully no border security is gonna take this away from you. Just make sure you put it in your carry on luggage and is not attached to the board when you go through customs. So the motors are 250 watts each. So on the single drive, you're looking at a top speed of about 28 kilometers an hour, which is about 17 miles per hour. On the dual drive, you've got a top speed of 38 kilometers an hour, which is 23 miles per hour. On the dual drive, that's pretty hard for a short electric skateboard. It'll be interesting to see how it goes in real life. The wheels are 83 millimeter 85A, so they are feeling a little bit stiff, but the thing that I wanna look at mainly are these trucks. They've got this suspension looking truck system that should act as a little bit of suspension and it's a four way mechanism. So if just one side goes over a bump, then only one side will adjust to it, not the whole thing. These trucks with the quick swap battery system is what makes this electric skateboard so unique. And it's also got a smart turn on system. So all you gotta do is drop the board on the ground, turn the remote on and kick push to go and the board and the remote will sync up and away you go. You don't have to bend over awkwardly to turn the board on, which is something that I really like. These bushings, just taking a quick look at them, are quite soft. I like that in a little board like this. It'd be interesting to see how they go speed wise. And the truck width is quite short, which is probably perfect for a short board like this. I think it's gonna be a good little cruiser board. It's got a shock absorbing crypt tape on it, which is awesome. So as I mentioned, it's pretty light. The single weighs 4.9 kilos and the dual weighs 5.7 kilos. So yeah, that is in the realm of some of the lightest boards in the industry, which is nice to be able to carry around, take on planes and traveling, that kind of thing, or even around your college campus, which is nice. And it's just, I think this deck looks really sleek. It's kind of enclosed, sleek looking stealth deck. It's all black with a little bit of red trim in the bearings and the bushings. Yeah, I kind of like the way it looks. I'm digging the vibe. The max load on the single is 100 kilos. I'm 90 kilos. It's lucky I didn't get sent the uh, single drive because I probably wouldn't have done it justice. And the dual drive has up to 150 kilo load. And lastly, the hill climb is 10% on the single drive and 20% on the dual drive. Nice to see this company not overstating their hill climb ability, but as always, we're gonna test that out later on. We smashed through those specs. Now it's time to take this thing out and do all of the performance tests and see how it rides. But before we do, please, if you're liking this video, hit that like button. You have no idea how much it helps me out. If you're liking my videos, subscribe for more upcoming content reviews and all things e-skates. And if you've got any questions along the way, just drop them in the comments below. I answer every single one of them. Check out my other videos. You'll know that I do get back to every single comment. Let's do this. All right, we are out. What a day it is today. Turn the remote on. Woo. Push to start. I love that shit. What are we in? We're in pro already. Let's just start in low. The braking's in mid. But I want to turn the braking up to pro. Let's give this a crack. Oh yeah. So I mentioned earlier about the uh, the suspension on the trucks, that four-way suspension spring set. Now that is awesome. It is so comfortable. All right, so this is low mode. Not very fast at all. This is medium mode. Man, I love how comfortable this ride is. Which way is this guy going? <laughs> that was my sister's girlfriend. She was uh, swerving on the other side of the road to try and trick me. Anyway, this is medium mode. It's not too bad. All right, I want to jump it up into high mode now see what this is all about. I can't believe how comfortable this is. I've got to be real careful that I don't get any speed wobbles. I'm not really sure how these trucks are going to go. I've got someone behind me. So, whoop. Very short wheelbase, which is what worries me the most. And I'm going to put it into pro mode. 
and I'm going to kick push because there's stones everywhere. Interesting thing about this, these trucks is that they lift you up off the ground a fair bit. I'm just going to head through this roundabout. So on a short board, it's only 27 inches long. You are fairly high off the ground and the truck width is quite narrow. So it's quite agile. But the, I don't know, the suspension just makes it very, very comfortable. Uh, have a look-see. I'm heading up a small incline here. It's probably at about between 12 and 15% probably. It's doing that with ease. It has got no issues doing that hill. Let's check some brakes here. It's a pretty decent stop. I probably wasn't going that fast. It's probably doing about 20 kilometers an hour. Came to a very decent stop. Let's see what happens if we go a little bit faster. This is 30 kilometers, 31. Pretty solid brakes on that. I think that's got a lot to do with the Hobbywing ESC that's in here. The acceleration and the braking curve on this board is nice and clean. Because of these trucks, it's a funny old feeling when you want to use the kicktail to do some tick tacking or anything like that because you go to press down on the kicktail and you get like a little bit of sponge before the nose comes up. Uh, let me see if I can show you. I'm not very good at um, tick tacking that kind of thing, but let me see if I can give you a looky. Although it is nice when you land, you don't have a really abrupt landing on that nose. It's nice and cushiony. All right, let's give this cruise control a crack. I'm just gonna hit the power button once. Yep, cruising. Cruising at 20 kilometers an hour. That's pretty good. I wonder how it goes uphill or downhill. Cruise control is a funny old thing, I don't know. I want to know, in the comments below, let me know how much cruise control you actually use when you're riding or how much you think you would use it when you're riding. Personally, I don't use it that much, but now that I'm doing it, it's not too bad. Hey man, what's happening? And to leave cruise control, you just hold down the brake, hit the throttle or press any other button really. Can't get over this, this deck feeling, this nice cushy deck feeling. I'm just looking around for a nice flat area to do the speed test. Kind of hilly up here. Not super hilly, but not flat enough by any means to be able to do a serious top speed test. I'm just gonna cruise around for a little bit and check back in with you guys when I found somewhere good. All right, so this spot ain't bad. I'm gonna do it one way, and I'm also gonna do it the other way coming back because I feel like I've got a bit of a headwind here. It might be slightly uphill, but we'll see what kind of speeds we get. We're already doing 30 kilometers an hour into a headwind, up a slight incline. 31. Yeah, it's not too bad. Turn around, we'll definitely get faster. No doubt we'll get faster because look, I can already feel, you probably can already tell in the mic that there's a lot less uh, wind coming this way. Let's go. I was really easy on that acceleration, by the way. I didn't floor it. Uh, the acceleration is hard, but most importantly, it's really smooth. Yeah, see, I'm already doing 33 kilometers an hour. 
so yeah 33 kilometers an hour that's pretty decent uh, on this board I'm 90 kilos remember so anyone lighter is should be getting uh, a little bit harder I think we kind of did a bit of a hill test oh hang on I have to indicate Check out this. That was awesome. I hardly felt a thing. Is that a main road? Might actually just turn around. I don't like riding on main roads anymore. <laughs> so good. Let's do some more. It's like I don't even feel it. That's some of those big cut stones placed into the middle of the ground designed to slow cars down. And generally, they are a pain in the ass to ride over. But because of these suspension trucks, I hardly felt the thing at all. These things are actually incredible. So I just got a vibrating warning from the remote letting me know that I'm now on the last bar. So I want to turn around and start heading back to where my car is. That's more vibrating. That's a good sign. That's all thanks to the Hobbywing ESC. Very, very good choice to put that in your board. I mean, I haven't really lost any power. It's just letting me know that I'm down to the last bar. The remote has now started vibrating four quick vibrations in succession. So one, two, three, four. And I can get pretty much the top speed on the flat. But when I try to climb any hills, the uh, the acceleration, the power up hills, it's pretty much shot. Be wary of that. If you're coming up to the end of the ride and you are gonna be facing some hills, just know that you might struggle a little bit up the hills. Well, that's the end of the first battery. Let's uh, take a look what kind of range we got. Top speed, total distance, 9.55 kilometers. And let's check out our top speed while I change my battery over so I can get back to the car. Top speed was 27.4 kilometers an hour, according to my watch. On the remote, it said that I managed to get, what was it, 32 kilometers an hour. I don't really have anything else to test it on. I can check it on the GoPro. I'll put the uh, actual top speed right here. So that's pretty much it. Let me change over the battery and I'll chat to you on the way back to the car. Overall, I kind of like this Earshark C8. D, the dual drive board, particularly because of the deck and the trucks. It's a nice slimline deck matched up with the shock absorbing grip tape and those suspension trucks. It just has such a comfortable feel. You can literally ride this thing all day without your feet hurting. Although keep in mind, if you are a beginner rider and you haven't ridden that much before, then you're gonna get some sore feet at the beginning, but you quickly build up a tolerance to that. The tic tac is a bit weird though with those trucks. The swappable battery, it was so easy to swap the battery when my board was, was flat. I've got a whole nother 10Ks to ride, just like that. It's not the most powerful board, this is a cruiser. It's ideal for someone who's going to college, wants to ride around the college campus. Maybe you just want to get to the train station, it's not that far away. Or you just want to go out down to the shops, have a bit of a cruise something fun to carve on. It's one of those types of boards. A few things I was concerned about were the trucks. The width of the trucks is quite narrow, so I thought it was gonna be really hard to balance on, but in that, and joined up with the height of the deck, how far you're standing from the ground, I thought it was gonna be really hard to balance on. But in the end, I felt pretty confident most of the time. So a few final things. I want to mention before closing out this video is this is an Indiegogo campaign. We have to remember what it's like in the past with crowdfunded campaigns like this. We have seen some real terrible examples of companies folding and not delivering on their promises. But saying that there have been some great companies who have put out some really awesome electric skateboards after crowdfunding. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm also not saying do it but I do think that this company is going to produce 
a real electric skateboard. Is it worth the price? Yeah, it's worth it. This board is pretty decent for, for that kind of price. It's got all the extras, including the swappable battery, the smart turn on, those cool little suspension trucks. It's a good, neat little board. For its full price, uh, I think it was something ridiculous like $8.99 or something, $8.49, something like that. <sighs> I don't know. That is really getting up there in price, especially for a board that does, you know, 10 kilometers on one battery. You can get boards that do a lot more than that for that price. But it is what it is. It's a very unique little board designed for a very specific type of riding and I really like it. I really like this board. So I think that's about it. E-skaters, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around to the end. It has been really fun doing this one. If you've learned something in this video, please hit that like button. It helps me out immensely on YouTube and it helps other e-skaters looking for good electric skateboard information. Hit that subscribe button if you want more content like this. Got a ton more electric skateboard reviews and info content coming out. And also if you've got any questions, just drop them down in the comments below. I do answer every single one of them. Just go back and see my other videos and uh, you'll see I answer everything. Thanks for sticking around guys. As always, ride safe out there and uh, I'll see you soon.